Before I do start this video, make sure to use my TCG player affiliate down below if you're looking for any of these singles that I talk about today. Also, this channel is sponsored by Arcane Fortress. If you're looking for the best deck boxes around, make sure to use my link down below in the description to check them out. One other way you can support the channel is by becoming a patron. There are some great benefits of being a patron to the channel, such as giveaways, deck advice, and more when you do join. Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today in Pubs on MTG, and in this video today, I want to discuss a deck tech around Wick the World Mine. I almost wanted to say something else, but it's World. But this is one powerful commander. I think it's going to be the best rack commander that you could be playing. Let's just be real, mainly because you could play Grixis color combinations with it. But let's first read what it does. So for three and a black, it does have a two four body. Whenever it or another rat you control enters, create a one on black snail creature token if you don't control a snail. Otherwise, put a plus one plus one counter on a snail you control. Also for Grixis color combination, you could pay that, sacrifice a snail. Wick steals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to each opponent that draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power. So this is extremely powerful in the aspect where it gives you card advantage and could act as a win con depending on how much counters you do have on a snail. Obviously you can play into the snail theme but really what you want to be doing is playing a bunch of rats on the field left and right overwhelming your opponents and then you'll eventually get that snail super huge so that you can sacrifice it. So on this deck tech I'm going to focus of course on rats because that's a big theme of this. We want to make sure a lot of rats are entering the battlefield so that we can get a huge snail on board. And then later on I might talk about a little bit of snails not too much there's only one snail i really want to talk about you probably already know what it is besides that point i'm also going to focus on the win cons of the deck and so without further ado let's get it started So let's first talk about the game plan of the deck. First of all, we want to focus on putting a lot of rats on the battlefield, but we also want to draw a lot of cards. Skull Clamp is going to get that job done for us because whenever a equipped creature dies, draw two cards. A lot of our rat tokens that we do create are going to have a toughness of one. Most likely you could equip that sacrifice that rat and draw two cards that's simple enough it's gonna be very effective and efficient for us in the game plan plus there is a pretty neat synergy with slugs if we put a rat on the battlefield we could make a slug token we could sacrifice that slug token with skull clamp then put another rat on the battlefield make another slug token equip that slug with one and repeat that process getting a full grip of cards because we are focusing on slugs and rats we want to make sure we could just make them into one creature type with maskwood nexus creatures you control are every creature type the same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that are on the battlefield. This will heavily synergize with our commander. We can make a changeling on the battlefield. It'll count as a rat entering the battlefield, which will trigger our commander, put a plus one plus one counter on a snail, and it could be that same token that entered the battlefield too. Plus for every rat that enters the battlefield, they're going to be a snail, so if we want to buff up a specific rat on the battlefield, we could easily do so. Usually I do like this type of effect in a lot of different creature type decks that focus on two creature types specifically. Because we are sacrificing creatures with a lot of one one counters on them, the Ozolith is is going to be an excellent include. Whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, put those counters on the Ozolith. So let's just say we have five 1-1 one -one counters on a snail token. We sacrifice that snail to our commander's ability. All those counters will go onto the Ozolith, putting five 1-1 one -one counters on it. Then later on at the beginning of our combat, we could put all those counters on another snail and then repeat that process, sacrificing that snail, putting more counters on the Ozolith, rinse and repeat. So this will ensure we could always get value out of our snails and deal a lot of damage. Speaking of damage, let's look no further than shared animal animosity for two and a red whenever a creature you control attacks it gets plus one plus oh until in a turn for each other attacking creature that shares a type with it typically this will end games let's just say for example you have five rats on the battlefield you swing in with all them you will give them all plus four plus zero until in a turn when they're attacking and of course if we do have mask with nexus on the battlefield it's going to even be better for us and the snail is going to be included in that mix with a rat but of course what really drives our commander is rats to make those slug tokens obviously the big choice that you can take advantage of is is Relentless Rats and Rat Colony. Each of these have that specific kind of ability where you could have any number of those type of card in your deck. You're not limited to just one like in Commander. But if I were you, I'd rather have one or the other depending on which one you prefer. I prefer Rat Colony mainly because it's cheaper and it still gets plus one plus zero oh for each rat you control. And Relentless Rats only focuses on getting buffed up only by Relentless Rats, not any other rats. So again, if you had to pick one or the other, I would prefer Rat Colony. There are other ways we could swarm the battlefield with a lot of rats song of i'm not even gonna try to pronounce that name it does have the ability for x and a red create x one one black rat creature token
tokens with it can't block and creatures you control gain haste until end of turn so in the late game if you have a lot of mana lying around you can just dump it all into this x ability make a lot of rats trigger our commander multiple times making a huge slug and then all your creatures will gain haste you can swing in maybe even for victory the mad ratter is another excellent option even though it does have a high mana cost of three and a red it's a one two body whenever you draw your second card each turn create two one one black rat creature tokens so this will help swarm the battlefield with our commander and a lot of other options with skull clamp or tox roll we're going to definitely draw more than one card each turn so we could have that advantage of making more rat tokens another option i did think about was ninjutsu with specific rat cards i did want to focus on nizumi prowler nashi moon sage of scion and i threw in tangled colony mainly because it's just a great option overall because nizumi and nashi do have that ninjutsu ability it has that option of just essentially putting another rat on the battlefield making a slug get buffed up or even putting a slug token on the battlefield each time and then we could just cast that other rat of another time plus what i really like about nizumi's ability is the fact when it enters the battlefield you'll give a creature death touch and lifelink until in a turn we could give that to our commander and then later on sacrifice a slug token deal damage to each opponent and also gain that much life depending on how much damage we dealt to each opponent too nashi has that ability to steal spells from the top of your opponent's library you have to pay life but that's not a big deal tangled colony is a great option depending on how much damage it was dealt this turn it can make a huge rat army as well but i personally feel like this deck wouldn't be complete without lord skitter sewer king this is such a great option in the deck because it consistently make rats on the battlefield also it does have an exile trigger whenever another rat enters the battlefield under control exile up to one other target card from an opponent's graveyard and of course it will generate rats consistently for us at the beginning of combat on your turn create a one one black rat creature token obviously it can't block but that's okay i absolutely love this kind of effect because it'll consistently put more rats on the battlefield for us on each of our turns and we'll buff up another slug so that we could get a huge finish with our commander's ability and it does act as great graveyard hate if somebody is playing a reanimator strategy and they just dumped a big giant creature in the graveyard we could just have a rat enter the battlefield and remove that threat but let's move away from eldraine let's talk about someone from phyrexia let's talk about carmunex the rat king man i'm seriously butchering a lot of names but otherwise this is a really good card in the deck because it could act as a win con mainly because it does have toxic one and other rats you control have toxic one so the poison counters could really stack up depending on how much rats you do have on the battlefield swinging in at an opponent also it does have an etb when it does enter the battlefield look at the top five cards of your library you may reveal any number of rat cards from among them and put the revealed cards into your hand so not only can we poison our opponents out of the game we could also get some decent card advantage depending on how much rats we draw into but now i do want to discuss win cons of the deck there's a lot of different ones that we could take advantage of of course we are in a token theme having a lot of rats enter the battlefield so of course perforos and impact tremors are incredible perforos god of the forge is a great option because whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control perforos will deal two damage to each opponent also if you do have a large army of rats on the battlefield you could just pay into that mana ability of paying two and a red creatures you control get plus one plus oh until on a turn just in case if you have nothing else to do and you have a lot of rats on the battlefield no cards in hand but you have a lot of mana available you could just pump them up and swing away at your enemies impact tremors is just a baby version of perforos i personally like perforos a lot better but impact tremors will get the job done for us dealing one damage to each opponent another win con of the deck that you could take advantage of is maronar this gives all your rats the ability of fear so basically this creature can't be blocked except by artifact creatures or black creatures so if your opponents don't have artifact creatures or black creatures on the battlefield they can't block any rats you control and especially if they get buffed up it's going to be spelling good game for your opponents not only that in a weird way this does act as a cranko you could tap them sacrifice a rat put x11 black rat creature tokens into play where x is the number of rats you control so if you do have a way to give all your rats haste you could definitely sacrifice a rat make a huge giant rat army trigger your commander even some more and put a lot of one counters on a sluggy control this is easily one of the best cards you could add to the deck for sure but personally to me the best card you could add to this deck is ash coat of the shadow swarm for three and a black it's a three four body whenever it does attack or block other rats you control get plus x plus x until end of turn where x is the number of rats you control so if you swing in with your commander if you have like 10 rats on the battlefield they're all going to get plus 10 plus 10 which just sounds ridiculous and could be a great win con but it does have some utility too at the beginning of your end step you may mill four cards if you do return up to two rat cards from your graveyard to your hand so not only is this just a crater hoof behemoth for all your rats this is also going to give you some great card advantage kind of card advantage because really you're just milling rats into the graveyard and putting them back into your hand so by far in my personal opinion this is the best card you could add to this list along with tox Rill. besides that point that's going to do it for me guys thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on wick the world mine this is going to be one incredible commander for rats obviously getting the grixis color combination is a huge boost for it i think it's kind of funny how they added the slug type in there i mean i guess it makes sense because if you just keep putting rats on the battlefield and you buff them up it's going to get out of hand obviously you could use 
use Mass Wind Nexus to make up the difference. Just the fact that this could be potential great card advantage. Obviously, you have to have a big slug on the battlefield to get a lot of card draw, but this also will deal a lot of damage to your opponents too. So I can see this easily being one of the best commanders of the entire set, because obviously I know a lot of people love their rats, so this is going to be one of the most popular ones for sure. But let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts and opinions about him? Are you planning on building him? What other cards would you add to this deck? Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Without out of the way, thank you for stomping by.